Excusez-moi pour ça. Nous allons d'abord faire une petite introduction. Добар дан свима, хвала вам на издвоено времену. Представляем вам ново предавание у низу предавания о суочавании Европе с нянем колониальным наследием. Да не бих дуже далее препуштам реч госпозиции Елени Виченкич, која ќе вас далее упутити у ово предавание. Thank you, Serba. Uh, so, as uh, Serbo Ljub already mentioned, this is the fourth in the series of lectures organized by the Institute of European Studies from Belgrade, Serbia, under the title Europe uh, Facing Its Colonial Past. And this is a very special opportunity, as today we have this very, very precious and rare <laughs> chance to listen to one of the uh, greatest experts on the history and culture of Haiti, but also one of the most wonderful teachers that I had experienced to, to meet in my life. So <laughs> to begin with, I will just give a couple of um, points about uh, Jean Casimir's uh, biography and his uh, experience. Uh, Jean is a leading scholar of Haitian uh, history and culture. He is a professor at the Faculty of Human Sciences of University of Haiti. He teaches courses on culture and society of Haiti and the Caribbean. He received his doctoral training in sociology and anthropology uh, from the uh, Autonomous National University of Mexico. And particular focus of uh, his studies was social change and development. He has held various positions, teaching and research positions in the Congo, Brazil, Mexico. He was also a visiting fellow at Duke University in the United States. And he has held various posts uh, with the United Nations, including the position um, of the United Nations Social Affairs Officer and position within the United Nations Economic Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean. Uh, more recently, so to speak, or in the 90s, Jean has also served as uh, ambassador of Haiti to the United States from 91 to 96. He had authored numerous books, numerous articles and book chapters, and the most recent one, which in a way will also be uh, presented today, or a short introduction into the decolonial history of Haiti will be given today too, but the most recent book is the Haitians, the colonial history published last year. Uh, so, uh, yeah, to keep it short, because one could actually talk about Jean for hours. <laughs> 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 to keep it short, I will just paraphrase one thing that Professor Mignolo had said in his foreword for this amazing book, and that is that Jean is a scholar that uses scholarship to advance the cause of the sovereign people instead of using the sovereign people to advance scholarship. So, yeah, without any further explanations, <laughs> I will uh, hand, the floor, hand the mic, and yeah, the floor is yours, John, please. Thank you, Yelena. You're very, very, very generous, as usual. No? And that's very kind of you. I must also thank the Institute of European Studies for this tremendous opportunity. I, I don't think I could tell you how happy I am to address you, to speak to you, and uh, particularly to Elena and her people, which uh, through a set of common friends, and I should name, for instance, uh, Ovidio Tipi de Leano, no? and uh, had taught me to know and love and understand somewhat no? what uh, is supposedly a Eastern Europe. No, I do not have a, enough knowledge of it, but I surely, through these uh, witnesses, I love you and it's a lot of happiness to address you for the first time in my life and I do hope not the last. Today, I wish to tell you about uh, the history of a First Nation. And uh, certainly I am not equipped, nor would I dare to talk about modern history or modern European history. No, you know much more 
about them than me. You know? And you have experienced very closely the development of modernity as I experienced it, but from another angle. As you know, a modern Europe destroyed the First Nation of America and uh, this destruction started in the Caribbean. The present conversation is about the history of Europe. It's not about the history of Europe. It, it's about the power of a First Nation trying to build itself while Europe was destroying this nation, was preventing this nation, was preventing the birth of this nation, was trying to ensure that the people they were gathering in this land now would be transformed into what they call socially dead person, that means slave. So my intention is just to address you on the feet of these people fighting against the senseless context which surround them and has been surrounding them senseless from their point of view. I mean, they do not particularly care that they make, make a lot of sense for Europe, not for them. I mean, that's another issue. So uh, the second, I don't know if you are seeing also the, the small PowerPoint I'm trying to, to follow to make sure that the uh, I do not uh, extend myself too much. In any event, the second slide I wish to talk about is the, is the fact that communal life in the Caribbean and in all America, in fact, preceded the, the incoming of a modern Europe. Modern, no, the second one, the one after this one. The state was the political arm of the conquest and had to overcome local resistance. Local resistance, the way sometimes in Europe is seen, it is seen as the genocide of the European on the population of uh, America. But we can also see it. there was a genocide, no doubt about it, but there was also the collective suicide of the Haitian Tainos, the people living in the country when Europe get there. The point is that those people who have been settling in this country for more than 5,000 years before the arrival of Christopher Columbus were grown up person living in their geography, in their context and controlling their society. Therefore, when they realized that it was impossible for them to get rid of the invaders, most of them decided to kill themselves collectively. There was also a collective suicide. This is important because it is not this uh, fragile, innocent, poor savages who were destroyed by Europe. No? They were grown up adults, organized in society, a collective, I mean, communal life, no? controlling their milieu. These survivors and what was left by the Spaniards in the island when the Spaniards moved toward Cuba and then toward mainland America, no, these survivors joined with what was left of the Ladinos. Ladinos were the African born people living in Spain no, and brought into the island to assist the conquest of the island by Columbus and his followers. No? The, those Latinos joined with the survival of the Tainos, and they also joined with the marginals of Europe who was running away from the savagery of feudalism and feudalism moving toward a modernity. The whole savagery that uh, the war of an intolerance, no? that the war of uh, religions, the the intolerance toward the Huguenots, toward the Muslim, toward the Jews, plus the exploitation of the poor sellers of the, uh, uh, all those uh, pirates who, was, who were in fact the thieves, the pirate is a thief, no? Those people were running away from Europe, moving to, from feudalism toward a capitalism. These people 
search for some refuge in those islands where Spain, its Inquisition, was not controlling. It is in this sense and at this moment the, that this group of quite diverse group of marginals will establish themselves, as you may see in this little map of Haiti, along the coast of, the, of Haiti, particularly in the western side of the island. By the way, the island was called Haiti, and the Spaniard baptized it Hispaniola. And nowadays, they want to make Hispaniola, I mean, the proper name for the island. Well, some people prefer the name, the, their baptismal name. That's their, that's their right. In any event, those people will establish themselves basically in this small island there, Tortuga, and they will, when they will organize there a set of communal societies based on solidarity and reciprocity. That doesn't mean they were the thieves. Eh? And then when they're tired of uh, preying on boats in the, in, in, in the Atlantic Ocean, they will start to settle alongside of this western coast of Haiti. It so happened that these communities that was brewing, and they used to call them uh, the Brotherhood of the Coast, a society very, very uh, democratic where everybody was exchanging their point of view, also their strengths, also their a, a, a desire to fight for their freedom. This society, you know, try to move towards some form of Protestant Republic, you no know, distinct from feudalism and distinct from the state organized system, being it France or Spain. It so happened at this time that the Spanish government in this part of the island guided by the principle of the Catholic Church, discovered Protestant Bible there and they decide to destroy this area, to destroy all the villages on the coast, the villages created by the marginals. Incidentally, I did not mention also that a set of those marginals he, he were formed by enslaved people running away from Jamaica, who was at the beginning in Spanish countries. In any event, so they destroy that, you no? Know, and since most of those marginal were people from the coastal part of France, you know, they go to France and ask some assistance from the court of Paris. And as we say in Haiti, they were running away for the rain and they throw themselves in the sea because France sent them the commercial companies and the commercial companies came to establish you no know, full-fledged plantation society, slavery plantation. No, so they were caught between slavery plantation and the uh, other uh, intention of imperial countries. This is how the communal life organized by the marginals running away from European expansion, modern European extension, these marginal running away will have to face the uh, authorities, modern authorities, modern state, modern imperial state of Europe, being it either Spanish or French. Therefore, uh, I show you this map for you to have an idea of the size of Haiti, which is a very small island, but the, the size also of the small islands in Haiti, because the full-fledged plantation societies will be even smaller than, for instance, the island you've seen here of a, a Lagunave. No, that will give you an idea of what the plantation society is really. If we go to the, to the other slide, which referred to a slavery plantation, the importance is to understand not this one, the one following. Savory plantation. Savory plantation is, the plantation itself is very similar to a, to a, a concentration camp. You see, the island of Barbados, which is the most perfect plantation society that uh, the British built, was smaller than half of the little island of Laguna we just saw in the mouth of Cage in the mouth of this island, Haiti. Okay, so 
Barbados, for instance, was the seat of the British Navy, of the Royal Navy. So therefore, people in Barbados have to find a way to survive in this military encampment. Now, a plantation is an institution that is predicated against an overt uh, uh, war against the labor force. Its military and, uh, environment suppose it is predicated on a, on restricted extraversion of the country. I mean, all resources, particularly military, will come from outside, and all produced uh, uh, goods in Barbados or in the on the plantation will have to go outside. You must see, and I'm going very fast on this matter to reach what I, is the point I want to make to you. You must imagine three types of plantation societies. The first one is the small, uh, the total plantation societies, which you will find in the smallest island, which are really barracks islands, no, with no rural part, only industrial, uh, modern, industrial, large, the largest institutions, economic institution of their time, with two, three thousand enslaved organized properly, no, to produce sugarcane basically and uh, 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 export that without the possibility of really a proper reproduction of the population. Most of the population, certainly in the case of Saint-Domingue, will come from the slave trade. That is to say, the labor force is not uh, being not nurtured, alimented by a local set of institution to produce people. The people, the labor force is bought on the labor market and it is produced basically in Africa. The second type of plantation society you have you now is the mixed plantation societies, you now which is the case of Saint Domingue, the case of Brazil or South America, etc., you know, of a South USA, etc. Those societies you now are societies where it is possible for the metropolitan country to organize their uh, in modern institution, their modern in part of the country while fighting against the other areas in the country that are not uh, 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 adequate for plantation economy. This is Saint-Domingue and this is what we are going to see and this is what will explain the whole history of Haiti. The last set of plantation societies, which we are not going to uh, consider here, are created in the 19th century during the process of the industrial evolution and they are created basically with a U.S. A, a capital, you no? Know, while while the a, a economic system, you no, know, is developing toward free market, industrial evolution, and the conquest of a, the vast a, a territory, colonial territories in Africa and Asia. No, this is simply to. A, to uh, make the frame of what we are going to see now, which is more in the subject matter I wish to deal with you. Local and imperial uh, powers are always at war. The imperial powers, the European powers, are uh, trying to conquest these islands and to establish their role in this island. Public order, no, is based on the right of conquest. I mean, they come, they take an island, they declare this island is the property of the king. This is the case of Saint-Domingue, no, of Haiti. It is the property of the king. And then private property is revered as the pillar of the system. And they expect those they bring into this uh, 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 context no, to respect and abide by this basic principle of private property. Meaning by that, you have a public order that is based from our point of view on the acquisition of what is not used. What is not used? You are robbing what you find there and you decide that what you have found there is the basic for society. So you start a society without morality, without a ethic, without a really a justice. 
No, and you want justice to follow from that. Therefore, you have no source of valid knowledge, norm, religion, etc., etc., of tolerance, and the communal group you find there will always be at the uh, odd with the basic principle offered by the colonial powers. Colonial relations that existed before the arrival of the imperial society will evolve contrary to what the experience of the people will give them. When the French come and occupy Saint-Domingue, no, when the French came to and occupy Saint-Domingue, the French will find a group of people who to survive had to invent their own language. This is quite important and this is key to the birth of the new nation. First of all, it must be remembered and the official history do not point that, that at this moment during the 16, 17, 18, up to the end of the 19th century, the French people do not speak French. We must understand that. French is spoken in Paris, it's called, in fact, Francien, not even French, no? And France has to wait until the end of the 19th century when French is getting quite rich with all the things French took from the colonies for his Minister of Education, Jules Ferry, to have enough money to disseminate the French language in all the primary schools of France. It is the moment no, when the French people start speaking French. And in fact, during the World War, First World War, in the uh, Les Tranchées, when they were fighting against the Germans, there were French people, soldiers that could not understand each other because they have not yet learned French. While this is happening, from the 17th century onward, in the case of Haiti, people has invented their local language to communicate. It's a language distinct from French, where you have marginal French participating, also British and Germans running away pirates, etc. You have a set of Jewish people, you set a set of Protestant people, you have a set of groups coming from Africa, but from the liberal market who are participating in the construction of this new language. And this new language now will come with a set of experience, norm, values, which are being created and elaborated in contradiction with the modern world, with the modern principle of capitalism evolving from its accumulative, accumulative accumulation, primitive accumulation of capital. No, at the time of enslavement, they are creating a set of other norms and values. These other norms and values are basically based on the experience they have fighting against the arrival of the commercial companies and whatever they brought with them, bureaucracy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, representing the presence of the modern state in the, the modern capitalist racist state in their uh, uh, geography. Therefore, this experience no, is, store, is stored with categories that disavowed the main basic, the basic pillar of Western modernity. Race is not something you find in our language, or at least it means something else. Slave does not exist. We are not slave. A Haitian can say, I am not a slave. He will never say, I am a slave. No, we do not know blacks. Everybody is black. Everybody is a Negro. No, we do not know mulattoes. What we call mulattoes is not what the, what the West call mulattoes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We have a set of concepts to organize and see the world, that concept that are absolutely different with the ideas that uh, the bureaucracy and the commercial company and modernity is bringing into the, the, the island. Therefore, what you are having since the 17th century when capitalism is landing in the country is a war, a relentless war between the colony and its metropole. Now, Official history will tell you about the history of the metropolitan country, which is in fact the, 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 the history we know normally is the history of France in Haiti. It not the history of the Haitians. You said, I mean, <laughs> for instance, they would say the Caribbean is plantation America, but plantation is a European institution. It's a European modern institution. 
based on racism on a, a set of values that we do not share. What have we done us? We have never done plantation. We've done what I personally call counter plantation. You see, we do not follow the, the pattern that Europe gave us. Let us see the next uh, slide, please. So since you have a set of people that you bring from Africa to be the labor force of your new system, you can ask you how could those people ever muster the strength they need to oppose this tremendous power, this, this might of the modern French state, particularly in the 18th century. Well, actually France, no, as I point there, and it is a history you know far better than me, France is not a, having a free ride in Europe. Europe is, as far as France polity is concerned, I mean, sorry, France polity in the 18th century is the, the history of its rivalry with the UK, with the British, no? They are always fighting with the British. They are in trouble with the British. And in fact, they are defeated by the, by, by, at the end of the seven war, a year war, year war. No, I am not going to enter in those matters. You could teach me what's going on there. But the fact of the matter is the crisis in Europe and the crisis in France will end up in the 1789 revolution, creating a tremendous debility of France at the end of the 18th century for France to behave and act like a metropolitan colonial country is supposed to act. Therefore, during this time of rivalry and a fight between French and its uh, enemies, no, Saint-Domingue has to fear for itself and the colony and its planters will end up creating what has been called the Pearl of the Antilles, the richest colony France ever had. But what is important in this 18th century evolution is that the labor force has never been able to reproduce itself locally. Labor is reproduced through the market. The French would go, or the slave traders would go in Africa by a set of people and bring those people there to work. Most of the population has been during the whole century a population of newcomers. So when 1789 is organizing a new social structure in France and they are talking of the sovereign people of France, this idea, this new value coming out of the internal historical process of France had in the colony, a set of repercussions that, that were quite dis disturbing for the planters and the owner classes. And they start a tremendous fight between the owning groups of the uh, island, particularly the white colonist planters and among uh, divided into royalists and republicans, the uh, mixed blood, most of them republicans fighting each other to control the colony, make sure that this idea of sovereign people do not cross the Atlantic and create a work in the colonial society. It is at this point that the emancipated people, the emancipated planters, no, see the opportunity of increasing their uh, social status no, and obtaining all the advantages that was uh, uh, promised, that was uh, codified in the slave code, no? And this group of emancipated planters will give you what has been dubbed uh, uh, the Black Jacobins, no? And what have given as idea that the Haitian Revolution is a revolution that is deriving from the French Revolution. There is nothing more false than that, but at least this is the official idea that uh, Haiti is going to have a state, no? Out of the Republican ideas growing in France. The fact of the matter is that this could follow if UK and Spain had not invaded at the same time because they had to weaken the power of France. 
no? and to destroy France because the French Revolution is against everything that the, uh, uh, the royalists had thought all over Europe. This invasion will create the possibility for the enslaved to be called as referee in the battle. You see, the owners of the plantation will invite their own enslaved, which they certainly didn't, find, didn't think much of, no, to fight for their own interests because they think those stupid Negroes will help us to beat a, a, our enemies. But it so happened that those stupid Negroes get into the fight with their own ideas. And this is, this is how the birth of the uh, Haitian nation. Let's see the next, the next slide, please. So the question for us is to understand how this nation is, is being created ethnologically, anthropologically. It is not nation coming from the sky, no. It is the fact that when you take from a Africa a set of people from different ethnic groups, mind you, you had in Haiti at least 24 different ethnic groups, you bring there alone, as the Toussaint Louverture would say, naked like worms, no, like a hand, no, and you throw them into this new a uh, system of a uh, labor, and they have to fence for themselves. What do they find there? A set of marginals from Europe who had also to fight uh, uh, the commercial uh, uh, companies and straight capitalism, oriented toward the out to, toward export instead of a inward oriented garden plot which the, these first a, a, a European marginal had in mind. So you have a whole set of people from different what the Europe call races, you no, know, who has to face you no know, modernity. And they are going to create a set of autonomous behaviors. All those people coming from Africa, they speak different languages. They have to learn the principle of the plantation system and they have to find a way of a sh shielding, helping each other, and they will create a set of groups you know, from the work gangs to, uh, to the, village, the, the free villages. I mean by that, the only possibilities of those fragile people, isolated one from each other, speaking different languages, the only possibilities for them to protect themselves against the abuses of a, of a slavery plantation was to create solidarity among themselves, to, to teach each other how to defend themselves, to take, to take profit of their uh, experiences. It is important to note that this uh, uh, movement has a twofold aspect. Once you have to learn the principle of the plantation, if not the planters and the safe drivers will kill you, but at the same time, you have to learn the principle and what move your companions. You, know, you have to understand what's going on with the other labels. You know? So you have your acculturation into the system, what people call creolization, from learning the rules of the plantation, and you have to invent new rules to protect yourself, and this will be transculturation through which you will learn what is going on with your neighbors. Therefore, you will have the creation of new set of actions, no? And this new set of action will not be isolated. Let me uh, try to show. In a given plantation, the work gang will stick to each other. Among those people in the work gang, a few of them will, will desert, as the planters will say, and live around the plantation you know, as isolated insurgents. You know? They will live out of a theft. They will live out of plundering. They will live alone in the woods. Then they will, some of them, move to the mountains and establish free villages. But between the free villages, the maroon villages, they say, the uh, bandits surrounding the plantation, and the work gangs, you will have always the same set of experience, the system of system, and the same language will develop from one to another, and movement of ideas, of assistance, of uh, information will take place 
alongside these different contexts where those people try to shield each other against the advance of modernity. So during the whole of the 19th century, this system is going and, and you have the creation of an oppressed set of people in different contexts of life. When 1789 happened and France really has a debilitated system of government, of colonial government, no? These enslaved invited to participate in this fight will end up with the general insurrection and they will start challenging the whole system, no? And you will have the last shipment of enslaved coming in 1791, the year of the insurrection. It is in this moment that the, the labor force will start reproducing itself without import of labor force from outside. Now, for the, po for the population to reproduce itself, it has to create new institutions. And particularly, it has to create genre because the slave has no gen genre. There is no male and female in the slave. Everybody do the job. Anybody have an action. If by chance a kid, uh, uh, an offspring is born, no, the planters has a right to sell it uh, uh, without the consent of their parents, etc., etc. The planters also give itself or himself or herself the right to pair male and female, what he called male and female, but this is not general, this is sexual relations, and they create a, a new person which they can employ, a, that they can employ, sell, etc., etc., etc. But when 1799 starts and the population has to a, a, a reproduce itself, the population is going to create what I call a counterplantation system, a whole system of a reorganization of the environment. Among the thing, those people who came in, in, in the island without any property, any, any right to, to possess, you should remember that the slave is defined in the, in the Code Noir as a person who cannot own anything that does not belong to, its, uh, to his or her master. So he came there naked, no? and he had to create a new system of life, a new system of family. When the Judeo-Christian family, quote unquote, eh, 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 in, that organized the French society and the French colonial society is based on property. So we are going to invent a family property system. And when the whole system is outward oriented for export of agricultural goods, we are, we are going to create a system that is based basically on food sovereignty. And then we are going to create what you do not have in the colony, a rural market. Therefore, you have the whole communal life start to brew and to, to function before 1805, 1804, before independence now. And at that time, the local language is becoming hegemonic. We are not with the independence proper. Let's see the, the next file, please. The next slide. So, it is very important to understand the difference between revolution and independence. Independence is a cessation. It is the fact that you pass from a colonial society to quote unquote independent society, but colonial independent society and independent society who want to recreate the pearl of the Antilles, who want to renovate no? and to reformulate, to salvage the plantation system so they can be a personality on the international scenery. While revolution is a structural change, is a new autonomous self-organized society, which is trying to, to, art, to architect, to produce, to engineer the happiness of the people who are in this society. And this is how the basic value of the Haitian settlers no, no matter if they come from Africa or from the uh, coast of Ireland or the coast of France, no, will create this basic value of the Haitian uh, ethos. Tout moun se moun. Every person is a person. Every person uh, uh, deserves the same respect and the same dignity, irrespective of a uh, skin color, which is, uh, let's not uh, qualify that. 
Therefore, the Haitian revolution is the right of the Haitian not to socialize, to create uh, an other atom of the modern world, not to be a capitalist rich country, to have a full-fledged plantation system. Because the plantation system is exactly the contrary of any ethos of equality, any ethos. No, no, the, the, what the Haitians have been looking for from 1804 today, no, is to contribute with as equal in the transformation of the social, of the modern world. It is not to be part of the modern world, it's to participate in its transformation on the basis of its goal, which has been laid down since before independence, which is everybody is a person and deserve to be respected, deserve the same honor like any person deserve, irrespective of a skin color. Let me go in the next uh, uh, file, please, because time is of the essence. So therefore, you will ask yourself how this small island lost in the Caribbean can really survive, because we are surrounded, surrounded by colonial powers, now, and these colonial powers are moving deals. They are going faster now with the free market economy, the industrial revolution, and the conquest of Africa, and the conquest of Asia, and the conquest of, let's say, in the worldwide wide resources. It so happened with the, uh, 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 this expansion of European uh, uh, imperialism, you, know, you will have what I would call the demise of Caribbean economy of slave plantation economy because you do not need uh, did not need sugar plantation anymore you had you have is exporting sugar through a, a, a beet sugar no so the caribbean economy and society society become absolutely marginal you have is not looking at the caribbean anymore when france is obtaining for instance is facing for instance the uh, independence of saint domingue no, after acknowledging the independence of Saint Domingue, less than six years after, France is a starting a, to it's a per se it's a aggression against Algeria, and France is discovering quote unquote Africa. So therefore, <coughs> those, those 27 kilo, square kilometers of Haiti is ridiculous when you think of all the uh, Afri equatorial French and the, all the. The territories and wealth France is 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 taking from the African nations. So, a, 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 while the French and the British are entering in the age of imperial colonialism, no, we are establishing a 19th century society which will give us what uh, Leslie Maninga and some historians call the, the bonheur villageois, the happiness of a village society. No? Our inward-oriented society is allowing us to multiply our population fivefold. A population that during a, a colonial time could not reproduce itself at all. They had to import all the labor force and now we have five times what we had at the beginning. But while we are living this quote unquote isolated paradise, no, the US is emerging as a power. The US is conquering half of Mexico or at, if not half a sizable part of Mexico. The US is killing all Eastern Amerindians and occupying California and the US has uh, well, you have the secession war and uh, destroying the whole uh, advance made during the reconstruction time, no? and uh, lynching uh, blacks in America. So end of the 19th century, the US is appearing as a tremendous power in, the, in, the, in America, and the US has to develop its economy to integrate its economy and they find out that the road from San Francisco to New York is happening via Ca Panama Canal. So to make that road and to profit from the wealth of the e e west to east of the US, no, you have to have EU boats moving freely. Therefore, you must have uh, 
foothold uh, in the Caribbean, and this is how the U.S. is going to occupy the uh, series of islands in the Caribbean, particularly those who are not uh, under the, the political uh, domination of France or the U.K. No, all the Spanish colonies and Haiti were independent are occupied by the U.S. And what happened, if you see the next, let me see the next uh, slide, please. No. So what happened is that a, a Haiti during the 19th century have a self-centered society, but the self-centered society have a series of difficulties. Colonization since 1492 up to this 21st century have never been governed by authorities speaking their language. We have always been you know, governed by people speaking a foreign language and all the codes of the law, all the discussion that matters for public life is done in a language you do not understand. We will come to that if you wish. And while the US, while we have this inward oriented society, no, our local language is in fact absorbing the elite. And the elite, the aristocratic, the aristocracy, no, they call themselves elite. No, the aristocracy that was created since the colonial time, no, this aristocracy has to face no, a set of imperial powers that really are not ready to compromise with this so called self centered society. So our uh, Aristocrats, our so-called elites, not aristocrat, I mean, oligarchies, our oligarchies, no, no, are vulnerable and they have to live a form of bovarism. They have to be at the same time modern, French, and very French. And we have, during this period of the village uh, happiness I was speaking about, you have the best crop of Haitian intellectuals producing set of very, very, very important uh, piece of, pieces of work, no? But they have to produce that at the time uh, Leopold is taking the Congo, at the time the Germans are, are, are destroying uh, South Namibia, or the Boers are in, in South Africa, etc., etc. So all these progress you have had, both in the people of Haiti in the inhabitants, the settlers having their counter plantation system, no, and the product, intellectual production you have is happening at the time when, when Gobino is the scientist and racism is reaching some point that, that you cannot imagine when blacks are being lynched in the US eh, left and right. And when the US took Haiti, if we go to the next the slide, no, when the US took over Haiti, please, 1915, no, the US decide they are going back to the plantation society. They are going back to quote unquote modern society. They have to force Haiti no, to offer a, a labor force for real modern society. So to the rift we have already in Haiti, the US is creating, no, an opposition between the Haitian economy and is recreating and the worldwide economy. A, a local language, no? And the institution of the counter plantation system are strong enough to make it impossible for the US to recreate modern economy in Haiti. The US took occupied Haiti nearly 15 years, no? They could not establish more than three plantation plantations. The Haitians to have 200 acres of one tenant in Haiti, you have to buy it from, in, from probably six or 700 different families because family property system is the property system in Haiti. You don't have private property of land. We, we do have, but it is always in order to, to build a family property system. So therefore, the U.S. has not been able to disaggregate the population of Haiti to work in Haiti. They established a, a new plantations in Cuba and Dominican Republic and will squeeze the Haitian peasantry 
and force them to offer a, a, their a labor force in those other areas, but not in Haiti. What happened at the middle of the 20th century, for other reason that has nothing to do with the evolution of Haiti, the Catholic Church, I am jumping there because I must reach the end, the Catholic Church is moving from Latin to vernacular languages. And in the case of Haiti, I mean, they had to realize the vernacular language is not French, it is Creole. And it is through them that the Creole will take over the public sphere, no? And the, with Creole, with the local language, no? The basic value of the Haitian, tout moun se moun, no? Being, a, a, enriching the whole set of political actions you are, you have in Haiti, challenging the modern system. This part is not in a, in the book, but this is a continuation and will help you to, will help us to reach the present day. So you have a society where the whole population, the new political actor, the new people who had no voice, and that is given voice by the arrival of their language on the public sphere, no, they are fighting for tout moun se moun in a society that is based on liberal, what you call it? economic liberalism, or neoliberalism. You see what I mean? So Haiti is simply ungovernable within this, this, this framework. They just cannot even have election because to have election, you should have institution that the people can understand. And all the institution are uh, codified in French and with a set of concept that uh, we can challenge. No? So the end of Haitian crisis that you're seeing now, and uh, yesterday there was a tremendous manifestation where they are asking the UN representative to go and learn how to count because they say there are 3,000 people when there was nearly a, well, I will not uh, name data, but it was obvious, not that there were a little bit more than 3,000 people opposing the government. The crisis you have now in Haiti can only be solved on the long term, no, at least, well, at least medium or probably the long term when the wretched of the US of Haiti will uh, join hands with the other people and make alliance of the global south. Because alone, we are too small, too fragile, and the US is too powerful, control France, Spain, and all, all those who call themselves the friend of Haiti and will not let us function in a, a democratic a government. Haiti is in these circumstances that people see Haiti very poor. It's not that we are poor, what the people are seeing, because we do not produce sweatshops or the sweatshops we have are not enough to make us quote unquote rich, no? Those that you have are going to continue their little advance, but they will not be able to enrich and to make Haiti what is called the modern country participating in the worldwide economic system. Why? Because simply you cannot have France or US or UK being democratic countries if they are ruled by, let's say, Mandarin speaking people. You see, and Haiti is ruled by French speaking people when no Haitian understand one single iota in what they are saying. I could continue that, but I will never finish. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Jean. Thank you for this wonderful presentation. Um, so uh, everyone can uh, turn their microphones on and ask questions directly, or if it's uh, easier, please feel free to type your questions into the chat and I will read them to Jean. Uh, uh, while we're waiting, the questions I would actually like to ask you <laughs> as the the matter of language is something that's um, of great interest to me and um, also uh, considering that we had some some discussions about uh, Creole language in the, in the past um, I would just like you to if, if you can to, to give some more information to uh, the participants um, uh, about the uh, language policy and how um, 
it's been changing since the 70s. I have recently also uh, been able to see some of the texts that you had written in the 70s, <laughs> basically promoting the, the, the language revolution and uh, accessibility of institutions and of education uh, to the people of Haiti. So uh, if you could just uh, tell us a little bit more about that. Thank you, Elena. Elena. You see, people coming from all sort of horizon find themselves in a kind of heaven, heaven no? I mean, away from the different development of the capitalist world, no? in La Tortue or in Saint-Domingue at the time when Saint-Domingue was not. So they have to speak. So they will invent language. They will invent, quote unquote, with what they had, they put together and they have a new language. But this new language is the archive of their experience. They have to be able to communicate, to help each other, to have solidarity and reciprocity, to create a society that take care of themselves. They do not have to create a society that participate in the, in the worldwide system. Okay, so therefore their basic value, the, the, the lens with which they are seeing the world is the language they receive from their elders and they are giving to their uh, children. The system in France itself no, is a system that based on the very intention, objective of the court in Paris and after the court of the state in, in Paris. It is l'Abbé Grégoire during the French Revolution that will not, note that not even 5% of the French, speak, French people speak and understand correctly French. You see, the rest of France is speaking other languages. French speak, oh, well, any number of languages, Breton, Gascon, Armagnac, Occitan. I will never end up a, a, a quoting them for the very simple reason French is a peasant society. French is not yet an industrialized society. Why the plantation system of the Caribbean are, have the most modern and the most advanced system of economic production. You see what I mean? The relation in the plantation system is nearly Fordism. You know, I mean, the, 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 the system is organized, codified, tasks are being done, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, and the people have to have a new language to do that. And this is profitable also to the owner of the plantation. So therefore you have this new language brewing and allowing the production of goods and merchandise to be exported, but also uh, <laughs> permitting the contact between the, uh, the labor force. Incidentally, those who organize the 1804 revolution were the slave drivers. You see what I mean? So this go beyond economic class interest, simply. There is an ethnic interest where you, you feel empathy even if you're a slave driver for the people of your own ethnic who are uh, down there. And not only that, in the modern societies, you have a set of what we used to call uh, during the colonial time, the Petit Blanc, who is fighting with the... With the, with the uh... So you have this language that uh, you are using to protect yourself against the savagery of the dominant system. It's nearly savagery. You can imagine 100 years of a population that cannot reproduce itself. You have always to import people. And precisely the, the independence of Haiti happens with two thirds of the population of African born population. <coughs> I mean, of 100 Haitian, 67% were a, a, a from Africa. So therefore you have a whole set of experience that you are using in this language to oppose the, 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 the dominant system, the French dominant bureaucratic, etc., etc., system. But very early, before France can even use one single language, before France can even get out of his peasant a, a system, I'm not a, a discussing that it is a, a retarded, a retarded system. No, no, this is not what I'm trying to say at all. What I'm saying is that the new modern system of plantation in the colony were a, a necessarily a, 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 a system where you needed to function one single a, set of communication, a, a, of element to communicate with each other. Now, this is what is really a, 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 the core of the, of, of, of the system. Now, 
for the state to to implant France, a French, for instance, it would be necessary for the French to be able, the French economy to be able to sustain the plantation economy. And this is what France could not do. 19th century, 18th century French colony is a failed colony because if it were not failed, France could not lose the colony. You can imagine Barbados or Jamaica ruled by a former slave. Imagine a British <laughs> colony, while Britain is becoming hegemonic, no? having to resort <laughs> to a former slave to, take, to, to keep public order. The fact that Toussaint Louverture was possible or Dessalines could win mean exactly that the French had a failed colony. And if the French have, had a failed colony, how do you expect the state trying to ape <laughs> the, the colonial power to have anything but a failed a fail state. How could Haiti have a successful state when France could not have a, a successful state with this, this all outward oriented system? No, so therefore Haiti will create this inward oriented system, his counterplantation system, but based on Creole language, on their own language, on their own experiences with where they built everything to satisfy their internal need. And it is not a present economy because they do need exchange. So they do have to have uh, uh, an extra set of production to obtain goods they need from outside and they do not traditionally produce inside. So therefore, this is where the role also of the uh, elite, the aristocracy, the oligarchy, I'm saying aristocracy, where the role of the oligarchy will come. But the oligarchy, will only find its services from the local system. You see what I mean? So they are all Creole speakers in the oligarchy, but they are the only French speakers in the system. You see what I mean? This is where their bovarism come, no? They have to deal with two set of snipers, no? French dominant and local Creole. And this is why also when the US took over and occupied the country, the US had to import a new oligarchy because the local Haitian oligarchy was tempted with some form of nationalism, which were totally uh, independent. So therefore, now when the church, for some reason, eh, the, eh, how do you call it? Eh, theology of liberation, a set of problems, no? When the church will decide to speak Creole in Haiti, the whole set of values of the country will now be dealt with in the open, no? And 1816 with the fight with the, when 1816 with the uh, destruction of Duvalierism happened, you have to link that with the transistor phone. And now the crisis Jovenel Moïse cannot solve is to link with WhatsApp. I mean, with WhatsApp and the distribution of information, we can stop the country automatically, but all the country, all the system, all the little villages, all the, can stop in one moment, no? And this is why I'm saying with this system, based on what the so-called friends of Haiti, US, France, Brazil, uh, et cetera, et cetera, UN, OS, et cetera, et cetera, they have a problem because they cannot have a free and fair election as the, what they call free and fair election, because even their media cannot manipulate the uh, values utilized by the population, which are basically anti-capitalist values that they are creating since the 17th century. I don't know if I have you, Yelena. Thank you, Jean. But now we have um, four questions. Uh, Danila, uh, would you like to go first? Uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much for the wonderful lecture. And of course, thank you for agreeing uh, to participate in this project of ours. It's, it's been an honor. So thank you very much. Uh, first of all, a short comment. I, I would like to make a short parallel between Serbia, although uh, we are so far away, I found a certain similarity. So when you mentioned how 
the USA um, when uh, when received the, the dominant role over the region and Haiti within it uh, somehow turned the Haitian economy and society back to the plantation stage, although it's not literally a plantation, right? Like it was in the in the early earlier period. I kind of realized that in present day Serbia, although we never uh, were colonized by any European country, and of course we don't have plantations now and we didn't have it before, we have a some uh, kind of that reminds me to the plantation society, which is maybe a symbol of plantation society. It is a, a modern day car part factory. So we don't have plantations, but we have modern day uh, car part factory to produce cables, lights, uh, windshields, seats, and other specific parts for big company producers like uh, it is now called Atlantis, it was Fiat before, Peugeot, or, or some other major cars. So in the 70s and 80s, in uh, Yugoslavia at that time, we were producing cars, entire cars that were capable of moving and transporting people. They, they were not very good, but they were, I mean, efficient, at least, at least so. And now we, of course, sold that factory. Uh, some of them were destroyed in the bombings in the 1999. But now we are producing just small parts. And of course, we are, as well as Haiti, export oriented. And uh, working conditions in those factories are very similar to the modern day slavery. Wages are uh, at the bare minimum, only to ensure uh, survival and uh, uh, work, uh, work conditions are very, very difficult. Um, and uh, but the workers, they must uh, continue to work because there is no other job available. And uh, now let, let's go to my questions. Uh, at the very uh, end of your presentation, you said that the future is in uh, some uh, way of South-South uh, cooperation. So I want to uh, know your opinion about uh, non-aligned movements in the past. Do you think that was a good way of cooperation, because nowadays we are facing some attacks on the concept of the non-aligned movement. Uh, in my opinion, this arises from Britain primarily. They try to present Yugoslavia and non-aligned movement as some kind of pseudo-colonialism. Uh, and. Uh, what do you think about that? And uh, do you think that some kind of revival of non-aligned movement is welcomed in the future? Oh, okay. Uh, let me say that I cannot say anything about the future <laughs> in the sense that this is beyond my scope of vision. But about the non-aligned movement, I, if I can rapidly refer to a certain conversation we had with uh, Mignolo and so on and so forth, the whole system no, is predicated with the existence of the state. You see what I mean? So uh, I don't think the world can jump fast toward, the, no, it's a negotiating project. It has, we had to go through the non-aligned movement. We have to try to use the state to change a, a certain number of things that he put forward. When we, excuse my English, break our face by using this instrument of policy, I mean by that when we realize that the state is always part of the worldwide system and <laughs> that is certainly predicated against the right of conquest of certain of those states, no? We now move toward other uh, 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 stage 
in our negotiation. And I do believe that what we have now is not a search for non-ally movement of state that we certainly have a challenge of the hegemony of the US through a set of other groups of like the BRICS, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, like uh, the Chinese, like the Russian, uh, Indonesia, Brazil, uh, South Africa, et cetera, et cetera. But this is not yet what personally I see as the main element of negotiation for our people. What I do see is that Haiti, for instance, in our case, we have a huge and very huge uh, compared to the Haitian population and very a significant minority in the US, participating in the US, in the US movement, for instance, in the Black Lives Matters. We have a large a, a migration in a France and in Europe also, participating in the different protests of the US. We have to realize that the Haitian nation is what I would call a delocalized nation. We are not living only in Haiti. And we have to have at least the political parties, the government is not so uh, inclined to do. We have to have a policy that include all the Haitians wherever they find themselves. Now, we do have to make alliance with, let's say, the Jamaicans, the Dominicans, or the Trinidadians. Well, what do a Haitian ever say Jamaican if not in New York or in Boston? You see what I mean? What do a Haitian see a, a Central American if not in the US? So we must think of our diaspora as our arm, no, which have to extend to our people. And when Puerto Rico, for instance, is demanding something, we must make sure that the Haitian diaspora participate in that demand of Puerto Rico so we can obtain from the Puerto Rican uh, uh, an assistance. No? I, now, I don't think, I am not saying the non-ally non movement, I, I am not judging the non-ally movement. It's a stage of in the negotiation. Now, I think we should go outside of the state toward the uh, international uh, 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 organization, but not state organization. I'm talking about uh, the whole set of uh, non-state, non-NGOs, non-state uh, organized uh, groups. No, for instance, climate change people. No, for instance, uh, Black Lives Matters. It is not a state-sponsored movement. No, Haitian has to participate in that because we had our Black Lives Matters in 1791. When we say a, a, all Haitians are black, meaning by that, <laughs> we do not distinguish. I like to say, and my friends say, who, Yelena would remember when I say in Haiti, Mignolo, who is blonde and blue-eyed, will, will be called a Negro. You know what I mean? Because everybody is a Negro. And the, the word Negro doesn't even have a genre, no? We don't know genre, et cetera, et cetera. So we have another way of, soli of solidarity. Now, what will we do tomorrow in the negotiation? Well, that depends on what they will do also. So I cannot enter in that and I will dare not enter in this area. Thank you, Jean. And uh, next is Raiko. Raiko has two questions for you, Jean. Uh, dear Professor, thank you very much. I have uh, two questions. First, I'm interested in the role of the Freemasonry in the Haitian Revolution. And second, can you tell us something more about the attempts of Haiti to become the member of the African Union? Thank you very much again. Uh... The role of the Freemason in Haiti is excessively important and it is uh, linked with the participation of the French Revolution in the Haitian Revolution. The Freemason has a, a tremendous power a group or pressure group, no? A group of a lobbying group in uh, France. And in Haiti, up to my youth, it was supposed that every president of Haiti was a Freemason. No, and every person who is more of some standing will also, particularly male, will also be member of the Freemason. And the discussion of the Haitian government with the Vatican no, has been delayed by the importance of the Freemason uh, in the power structure of Haiti. But the Freemason in Haiti work 
obviously within the frame of the state and the frame of the French state. They are French oriented groups, you know, this group. They do not deal with what we call Bosal, with Africans, with local culture. No, 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 no. They are an international group. And Haiti is very, I mean, international state, state uh, type of group. But this is very important because this is the first element of, a, of solidarity, no? Between, and mind you, this is quite remarkable, between Haitians, UK, France, I mean, beyond the divide of a, a imperial a, a units, no? And a, I think up to now, the Freemasons are very, 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 very a, influential in the Haitian society. The relation of Haiti with the a, African Union, a, I'm not too versed on this matter, no? But indeed, there's some kind of empathy between Haiti and Africa. The difficulty to see that when you are giving the role I personally give to the local language is that in the local language, Africa doesn't mean what it means in, in French. You see, Africa to the local language come via France. It is when the French people during the revolution, particularly Robespierre, would not like people to talk about slaves in the assembly with this august assembly of people, they said, we cannot call them slave because this word should not be used here. No, and so okay, let's call them African. So, but you cannot call them African. Some of these Africans are no slave. No, and this is when they decide to call them cultivator. But those quote unquote African born people at that time called themselves Guinean. And in the local language, when you want to say you're from Africa, you say, I'm from Guinea. You say, I'm because Guinea used to be a very huge part of Africa, where the first a, a Haitian would come. To such an extent that by the end of the 19th century, when the oligarchy is talking about Africa, and they will speak of an Africa that the population does not know of. No, they will speak, for instance, that uh, Haiti is the first daughter of Africa. No? And when you scratch what they mean, they mean the Haiti, Haiti is the most occidentalized. Uh, so I mean, that is not exactly what the people say. When you ask somebody, uh, do you serve the gods of Guinea? You said, I mean, this is Africa, Guinea. <laughs> you know, I mean, that has nothing to do being first or second in the mind of the French people. Okay, so when you reach now the beginning of the 20th century, you know, when Price Moss, et cetera, pointed that out, or talking about Africa, in most cases, they wish to talk about the peasantry and they use the word Africa. You no, know? all of that you know, is in the background of the policy used at the level of the oligarchy. But the sympathy toward Africa quote unquote, no, is basic. And when, for instance, a Libya or et cetera, a come to, for the independence, the Haitian representative in those a, a assembly, no, against the order of the president will vote for the independence of Libya. You said, I mean, because Haitian cannot understand Haiti opposing the independence of any African country. And Africa is still, you know, I mean, part of us. I mean, Africa, what we call Africa, what we feel as Africa. But the uh, intricacy of the present relationship between Haiti and the African Union, I am not sufficiently uh, informed to give an opinion on that. Thank you, Jean. The next question is from our colleague from Middelburg, CMA, Jeng. Hi, Jean. Thank you for the lecture. Hi. I haven't seen you for almost three years since the, the Colonial Summer School. I have a question. The Chinese ambassador, Gang Shuang, at Security Council, made a very harsh comment on Haiti's government several days ago. I wonder what do you think of it? And could you introduce more about the current situation of Haiti and the historical causes of it? And to my hopes that this question will not offend you. 
<laughs> no, first of all, I am so sorry. I don't know exactly what the Chinese ambassador said about Haiti, but the present uh, system in Haiti, I think I try to, to show and to prove that this system in Haiti is at the service of the US system. And mind you that there has been since 1915, the occupation of Haiti, there has not been one single president of Haiti that can stay in power for more than two years without the blessing of the US. The only one who tried, Aristide, did not last more than two years. He had a coup d'etat. All the Haitian e, 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 presidents, no, are, with all due respect, puppet of the US. You see, what happened when the US took over, no? They decide that uh, Dartignav at that time was the best uh, uh, candidate. And the historian reporting that, meaning that they elected Aristide as candidate. You see what I mean? And from that point on, you cannot find in Haiti any single president. Now, when you reach a, a, a Jovenel Moïse, Mark Ely, those are appointed directly by the U.S. The U.A., in fact, this is not even Jean Casini saying that. Uh, the representative of the O.S., a Brazilian, wrote in his book that the U.N. representative told Bartolome, I will make you a president. You see what I mean? So, I mean, I'm not surprised that they are following the U.S. And this is why, what I am saying that, no, I didn't say it here, but at least let me state it now the international community and the US obviously, and the Haitian oligarchy in Haiti would say they have their two feet in one single shoe. I mean, they cannot move. They are really uh, trapped because they cannot have any, any democratic uh, issue. As I told you, imagine France or the US governed by people speaking Mandarin. No, in Haiti, this is what you're having, Haitian, have people speaking French governing them, no? And all of a sudden they find a language, which is another language with other values, with other system of codifying the world, no? Taking over the public media, the public sphere, no? And they have to make election there, they cannot have free election. Even in the US, they cannot have free election, not to speak here. You see what I mean? So they just cannot. I do not know what the Chinese government said. I am not, a, I cannot be offended by that word. I don't know in any event, but this government here, you see Jovenel Moïse, when he came to his, made his, his election on the basis that he was a planter, himself a banana man, you no, know, talking about banana plantation system. How can somebody who went to school want to recreate banana a plantation in Haiti? You know, I mean, I mean, what have you studied? Don't you see that the whole of Haiti is built against plantation? But as far as he's concerned, there cannot be modernity without sweatshop. You know, I mean, they want to convert Haiti. This is why uh, one of the, the previous question, I think by, uh, I don't, well, the previous question saying that Yugoslavia, I'm sorry, your country is being transformed from, produ from, from producing cars to producing spare parts. You said, I mean, because the whole system, modern system can only think in terms of export oriented in their so-called global village. We poor people, we where we live, we think inward oriented world, we think private life and all conspiracy, all discussion, all change can be only done in the framework of our communities, of our private life and in our case, in the framework of our local language. If somebody wants to make the revolution in Haiti in France, he's joking. Because there will not be 5% of the population understanding that. And the state will rapidly co-opt these things. But when you speak Creole, you know what I mean? When you speak the local language, you can have a revolution. And this is where the, the local language or revolution is linked with technological advancement. advancement. WhatsApp is key to the use. I mean, because information, let, look at me talking to you from Haiti. You look at where you are, you said, I mean, this is technology. And I can have from a, the question of Danilo, for instance, I can have solidarity between me and him, even though we are whew, so far apart.
but our history will cross, no? So, I mean, this is the key issue. But my history from my angle, his history from his angle, because when he speaks his language, I don't understand. If I speak Creole, he will not understand. So we use the imperial language. You said, I mean, because our problem is not fighting, our problem is enjoying life, is getting in co into contact, is solidarity. If we have to use the imperial, we will use it. So what? <laughs> you know, I mean, they are as human as we are. You see what I mean? Anyway, so uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I probably are not specific enough for your question. Thank you, Jean. And uh, Stefan is the next person to ask you a question. Stefan, please. Uh, yes, hello. Uh, thank hello. you so much uh, for your uh, fascinating lecture. Uh, I've been personally uh, acquainted a bit uh, only with the, uh, with the Haitian Revolution because I was uh, studying African-American political thought. Uh, and, uh, and recently I've, uh, I've uh, even published a book about it called From, From Slave to Citizen, uh, the struggle of uh, African-Americans uh, for the recognition of humanity. And uh, Haiti uh, is, uh, as I've learned <clears throat> over the years, uh, one of the, one of the uh, defining points, let's say, of the um, American political thought, or let's say um, United Statesian political thought. Uh, so uh, first, I mean, after the revolution, of course, the, the slave owners were terrified of, uh, of the uh, example uh, that the Haitian people gave uh, that might be replicated uh, in the United States. Uh, and of course, uh, first abolitionists, uh, abolitionists uh, like Frederick uh, Douglass uh, uh, was actually uh, um, calling Haiti the first black republic that, uh, that, that is the, the example for, for them and so on and so forth. But even Douglass, uh, as an American, wanted uh, throughout most of his career uh, to, uh, to colonize Haiti. So he uh, was actually advocating, uh, except for the, uh, for the two parts of, uh, of, of his life, uh, which, which I wrote about in the, in the chapter Haitian Dilemma, uh, where, uh, where he was skeptical uh, about the future of African-Americans in general and about the uh, expansion of the United States uh, uh, on the broader Caribbean. Uh, Bassein on Cuba pr predominantly and uh, and Santo Domingo. Uh, so uh, having in mind this uh, extremely complex uh, relation with the United States, where even uh, the uh, the black intellectuals uh, would uh, would be keen on uh, on you know integrating Haiti uh, and other Caribbean islands, in spite of. Uh, hailing them as uh, as the examples of the of the free uh, black republics uh, and so on and so forth uh what was the reaction I've, uh, in in 2010 uh, during the earthquake and and the aftermath because uh, i've heard and i've read a lot about it from from non haitian uh, sources uh uh, for instance, that there was there was a lot of manipulation, that there was kidnapping even of, of children, uh, that even the Clinton Foundation was was involved in that, and in the uh, perspective of the let's say historical memory uh, of Haitians in relations to the United States, uh, how was the aid and and the military uh, aid or military intervention? Uh, that that came immediately after the earthquake. How was it perceived? Uh, let's say by the broader Haitian public. Thank you very much. Your question is a one million dollar question <laughs> because <laughs> there are so many aspects in it that it would be rather difficult to to answer. But let's start with the end of the question. When uh, the earthquake happened, I was a, at Duke University. And mm. I was invited to give a set of a causerie, of, no, of a presentation on Haiti. In one of those presentations at the UNC, the University of North, the state of North Carolina, State University of North Carolina, no, a, relating to the help to give to Haiti, and the the 
auditorium was full of people and uh, the Politburo no, was a set of the radical, most of them blacks, and they were insisting to a question that was made that the assistance of the US to Haiti should be done through black capitalists. It is the blacks that should go to Haiti and to help Haiti, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And they were applauding and they were all hot on the matter. And I was there very quiet. <laughs> so that was a little bit embarrassing. So they asked me, what do you think, Professor? I said, well, it so happened the Haitian will not distinguish between the black and the white capitalists. <laughs> you, you see, that is the point. And this is the important aspects of the, of the issue mm -hmm. and, and of your question. You see, we talk talking about black, but what the North American call black is not what the Haitian call black. You see, because the North American black is a group who is a minority in his country. Mm. Black Caribbean in general are majority. Mm. You see, when you say black is beautiful and a Haitian could say, is there anything else? <laughs> you see, <laughs> you see what I mean? So uh, uh, the minority black in the US, the group that is minority has a way of seeing itself as uh, the most advanced black in the world. No, in the imperialistic way, in a way. Well, they are tempted by their position. This mm -hmm. is why I say we must be used to listen to each other, to understand mm -hmm. the logic of our position. You see, for Haiti, black is an invention of colonialism. There is mm -hmm. no such a thing as black. Mm -hmm. There is no such a thing as white. This is why I can call Mignolo, or I could call Danilo. That Negro is calling, calling you. I say, what Negro? He just come from Serbia. He has a funny language. But, and if I insist, they will say, well, he's white. He's color white, but that doesn't mean anything. It, it has no value of his being black because he's a Negro, period. Mm -hmm. no? And I go beyond. Yelena, I have a friend of mine who is like Yelena, and she had some marital problem. I could not ask that, uh, directly. So I asked her, how are you doing? And she said, well, Negro fighting. <laughs> I mean, I am fighting, she meant. You see, I mean, because she's not even she. She's a person fighting. You see what I mean? So if you do not see my historical experience where myself is identified with everybody who is suffering like me and fighting irrespective of their skin color, you will not understand me. And I was nearly lynched at the New York State at CUNY. City University of New York, when one day I said, and that's not very long ago, that Haitians are nearly colorblind. Because for them, black is an entity, is something they live. They live by that. They are a black nation in the US. I am a nation, period. And I have no color as a nation. No? I was wrong to say what I said because they could not possibly understand me. I must understand their whole historical experience that make them a unit out of black because they are a minority group, a minority group oppressed because they are black. But when you look at the Black Lives Matters manifest demonstration, mm -hmm. no, you see, but what they call black is what I call Negro because mm -hmm. you find merely, you find no black in the march, a set of kids, a set of Latinos, a set of white people opposing and shouting Black, black Lives Matters. So, the problem uh, you are raising when you're talking about, for instance, you're talking about first black republic, but we must pay attention. What is the republic <laughs> in Haiti? What? But France has no republic in the 19th century. You're not expecting Haiti to have republic, no? Because actually the historian of the republic, Tomamadjou, would say that is not a republic. It's an elective monarchy. The Patreon or Boyer do whatever they want. They had no parliament, nothing. You know what I mean? Secondly, Haiti, could Haiti have a black republic? So black could be a, a, a something substantive in Haiti. When, when a Dessalines said in the first constitution, and this is reflecting the Haitian views, all Haitians are black. You know what I mean? So he, he says no question of having a black republic. There is a republic period. Mm -hmm. I can ask you what is the first white republic Exactly. You said, I mean, because you're taking white republic as the default value. You see, when you're talking about the black republic, and this is what the Haitian will not accept, white is not mm -hmm. the default value. 
You see what I mean? All this is built into our local history, no? And the local history of the US make of black thing. And I could give you a lot of example, for instance, where the, 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 the black North American, they thought that the US should occupy Haiti, no? With black soldiers, mm -hmm. you see what I mean? And <laughs> you see, but that will make no change. Exactly. <laughs> they will, because my son, who is as black as me, when he come in Haiti, they say he's a blanc. You said, I mean, he's black, but we call them blanc because we mean stranger. He doesn't speak the local language. He doesn't participate in the local language, in the habits, etc., etc. And we have a very good joke, at the, and it's not a joke, anecdote. When the Black Panthers under Duvalier was mm. seeing Haiti as one of the black republics that could challenge the USA, etc. And Duvalier indeed challenged the US ambassador here at several, in several occasions. So those group of Black Panthers decided to visit Haiti, this first black republic, etc., etc. And they, were, they nearly had a heart attack because on the street of Haiti, the kids was rushing, rushing them, blanc, 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 give me five cents. <laughs> because you can imagine calling a Black Panther blanc. <laughs> you know I mean, he wanted to kill himself, but the young fellow thought he was blanc. You see, so all those things are built into your historical experience. And it is, this is what is important to listen to the Blacks. You know, the Haitians have been able to make of their language, no, uh, citadel, impregnable citadel. But what about the Barbadian, the Jamaican, the Martinicans who really do not have a Creole? Or what about the Puerto Rican who speaks Spanish? Or the Argentinian who speaks the imperial language? Mm -hmm. you now, what is going on there? I really don't know. What I'm trying to say is that we must be prepared to listen to the oppressed people and to respect their choices. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jean. Um, I think we still have time for one or two questions. So if anyone would like to ask Jean a question, this is uh, yeah, the last opportunity. In the meantime, maybe I could just quickly jump in, uh, Jean, and ask about these recent recent events and, and recent um, protests in Haiti. There's been a lot on the news about it, and there's been uh, many conflicting stories, too, about the sources of the violence uh, on the streets. And uh, uh, recently I bumped into a, a couple of uh, news stories uh, or interviews with the UN uh, Special Representative for Haiti, uh, Helen uh, Lalin, I think her name yeah. is. <laughs> and she, it's very interesting that she had proposed supporting Haiti with basically funding in order to recruit 10,000 more police troops <laughs> in I order to... Yeah, yeah, it's it's recent. It's from like two, three days ago. But basically, this is to uh, deal with the violence where a significant part of the cause or originators of a significant part of, of the violence are people who are former police. <laughs> so if, if you have yeah, some more information about that or some opinion, that would be great. Yesterday's manifestation no, one of the chants was Lalim, go learn how to count. No, <laughs> because Lalim said in the US that there were 3,000 people. And at least there was 100,000 eh, on the street. No, and that was one of the chants. Eh, eh, that's, not an, that's not the problem. No, when the US occupied Haiti, the first thing the US did was to create an army. They call it La Garde d'Aïti, no? And this army was part of the Marine Corps. They were supposed to enter in fight if the Marine Corps was in, was in fight. Okay, why did they create a new army? Because the old army was a remnant of the indigenous army and was always giving coup d'etat. So they wanted an army to maintain what they call public order, okay. When Aristide came in, came in power after the coup d'etat that was engineered by part of the US, because the US is a very heterogeneous system, particularly when intelligence community is concerned. So part of this system engineered the coup against Aristide. So as when Aristide came back in power, 
Now, the first thing he does was to eliminate the address of the army. And he would tell me at that time I was ambassador, but what, what is the army? They even have, they don't even have an address because in the headquarters of the army, he put the Ministry of uh, Women's Affairs. No, so there was nobody who know where you could address the army in any event. No, but I don't know if this was a move forward because now you have so many armies, you don't, little armies, you don't know what happened. So uh, uh, you don't know where to refer to it. Now, the police the US created, with that coming of the demands from the low classes of Haiti, no, took to the street to ask for more services, more salary, more. And yesterday, in the in the man in the demonstration of yesterday, I have uh, I received a photo of the people in the in the street offering flowers to the police, the, the manifestation of flowers to the police. And this is why I'm saying the government the government is Haiti is becoming ungovernable because the police, no is also protesting against the system. I mean, the core that was created in 1915 to put order and to keep order and to make sure that Haiti is a client society. Now this core is now being absorbed by it. Now that doesn't mean you don't have a set of quote unquote unruly gentlemen kidnapping left and right. This is exactly the problem of the present negotiation because particularly when it is not a negotiation that is quote unquote orderly by political parties with an ideology is the whole set of group in Haiti trying to find a way through. And because of the form of exploitation and domination by the dominant powers, no, there was there is no set of a cohesive group and the set of political parties that op are opposing Jovenel, they cannot see their way through a neoliberalism. They, I mean, they offer you a set of projects of economic development, <laughs> one more look, more look more, much more like the other. You know, I mean, it seems that all of them have the same a, a blueprint to develop the country because they cannot think as political party in terms of inward oriented development. They cannot think in terms of municipal autonomy. They cannot think in, in, in terms of communal socialism. You see, they must think in terms of state and the state by definition, in my reading, is an oppressive structure. You said, I mean, by definition in this case, because it's a state that is born out of colonialism. You see, so the present situation where the police is fract fractured, no, well, uh, the dominant group cannot use their classical institution to put quote unquote democracy. I mean, <laughs> I don't know how to call that democracy. You know, I mean, elective democracy, electoral democracy, whatever they call it. No, and this doesn't work anymore because precisely the media in Haiti is not able to make its propaganda through the local language. No, the local language is coped by key values no, that tells you that everybody deserves the same right and the same respect than any other person. Nobody can be more equal than others as the as story states. Thank you very much, Jean. Uh, so yeah, since we did not receive any more questions, um, I believe that um, we should have some closing words from a representative from the Institute of European Studies. So Mr. Djurkovic, if you are still with us, um, it would be nice if uh, we could hear some words in closing. Thank you. In this case, um, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm here. Okay, I just <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Monsieur Casimir. Uh, uh, merci beaucoup. It
C'est magnifique, c'est pour mon prince, je ne vais In this great way, this uh, to today, uh, and, and uh, to this very great project because your academy. In different fields, uh, people around the world had it distributed uh, today. I'm afraid that we've lost the connection with Mr. Jurkovic. Um, I'm, I'm here again, sorry, okay. uh, it just went. And I'm, I'm briefly finishing, okay. Uh, I, I wonder where, where I stopped actually that you could hear me, but my point was that it was really great uh, for us and our, our culture here to uh, get the knowledge of the metropolis and the way people perceive today the former uh, practice of colonialism and the experiences in in these countries but also in in a way uh, to to have this kind of experience that you presented us actually of the uh, nations and people who were the subjects of this kind of practice and who are also uh, in a way trying to to face its uh, 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 very complex history that is in as you promised uh, explained actually today in many ways defined with the previous history of colonialism and different experiences so thank you very much and I wish you all the good uh, health in these crazy times, of course, and <laughs> lots of good uh, 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 wishes to your people as well. And by the way, for those in Serbia who don't get uh, uh, the, the uh, adequate, let me say, uh, percentage or, or the, the measure uh, of where we are, we have to say that what we have now without Kosovo is 7 million of people only with Kosovo 1 million, let me say 8. Haiti has between 10 and 11 million people living there. So in that sense, we, we should know that this small island is actually much bigger than our country. <laughs> and, and uh, uh, also, in a way, that's the experience that we also have. We also have very big and, and strong diaspora all around the world. So in that way, we also sympathize and have this experience that you also uh, presented us today. Thank you very much. And thank, uh, thanks to everybody who was participating today and to organizers and to our colleague Srba Peović, who facilitated actually our meeting today. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. This was wonderful. Thank you very much. And I hope we will be able to do this again in the future. My pleasure indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. All the best. And thank you. Uh, Jelena? Yes, yes. Uh, samo bih iskoristio priliku da najavimo naše uh, naredno predavanje koje ćeš ti održati, koje će biti uh, 15. marta u ponedeljak u 12 časova. Ti ćeš, ako me sećanje dobro služi, prvo govoriti o holandskom e, kolonijalizmu, a nakon toga, nakon predavanja e, kolege Antolovića o Nemačkom, ti ćeš ponovo govoriti ali o skandinavskom modelu kolonijalizma, tako da pozivam e, sve kolege i ostali koji su bili prisutni da nam se pridruže za dve nedelje u 12 časova. Oh, um, John, uh, if you have time, we would also be really pleased to have you uh, in the, the upcoming 
lectures because we will have one of these every two weeks. So the next lecture will take place in, in exactly two weeks and I, I will be presenting on Dutch colonialism. Uh, so yeah, if you have time, uh, it would really be appreciated if you could attend. And of course, all other speakers, and in case there is interest, we can do this lecture in English language. 